so welcome back so we'll continue uh, discussion on schrodinger equation which we started in the previous class now we consider <coughs> schrodinger equation with a potential okay so before that i would like to <coughs> make some comments some references and other things uh, regarding the heat equation or more generally the parabolic equation uh, you can refer to uh, friedman's book so friedman has this is a friedman uh, uh, this title is partial differential equations okay. so in fact you uh, see in the second part of this uh, book a lot of discussion on semi groups even autonomous uh, semi groups so autonomous means so you can even the abstract cauchy problem we can put see so far we have considered only a a operator but here it also can depend on u okay so this essentially developed by kato okay so you issued lots of discussion on that also kashan's book functional analysis and applications so that's kashan's book this also contains a discussion on hyperbolic equation in particular wave equation uh wave equation we discussed in two hilbert spaces so let me just so one hilbert space is this hd cross l2 and the main reference for this is lax and philips uh scattering theory and you also see some discussion on this uh, in v petkoff's book so the title is scattering theory for uh, hyperbolic operators okay and for <coughs> uh the hilbert space h1 cross l2 uh, so did that so this is essentially uh, paji's book or kashan's book okay and for schrodinger equation so let me again just say that schrodinger equation so main reference is kato's book so this i earlier cited uh, perturbation of linear operators that's one thing and you also see uh, a discussion on schrodinger equation in schuster's book this also i cited earlier in fact here you uh, see uh, multi particle dynamics so schrodinger equation uh, what we are discussing is for a single particle uh, this is multi particle system so you see a, a discussion in schuster's book perhaps in kato's book also multi particle system so see <coughs> one can write down a schrodinger equation even for multi multi particle system hmm. and i regarding this one just want to make a comment this regarding hd okay this uh, i feel there is still more <coughs> to understand the relation between this hd and h1 okay than uh, 
uh, just definition, but there is something more there. So, uh, we need to uh, analyze more about these two Hilbert spaces. Okay. So, with those remarks, so, so let me continue with Schrodinger equation uh, with a potential. with a potential. Okay, so, this so, let me use a different uh, uh, symbol for the potential. So, just this is Laplace and u plus q u. So, I uh, work only with R 3. So, similar analysis can. So, this is the physical space anyhow. So, in other uh, R n, it is only of mathematical interest. Okay. So, last time what we showed was this uh, Laplace n with domain H 2. So, this is free particle, there is no potential uh, domain H 2 is a self adjoint operator, self adjoint operator in L 2, operator in L 2 okay. and that implies by Stone's theorem this I times Laplacian generates. Uh, <coughs> a unitary group. Okay, and that is so free particle. So, there is no problem there. Okay, so, with now, so we assume that we assume q is real valued. So, a typical example is the Coulomb potential typical example is G O U L U M B okay potential uh, Q x equal to there is a constant so but I just mod x <coughs> so in R three that is locally integrable. Okay. So, that is so that is typical example. So, this multiplier operator, so that is multiplier operator m q. So, what does that do? So, it takes u and multiplies by q. Okay. So, <coughs> this domain of m q is set of all u in L 2 such that again this q u is in L 2. Okay. So, that multiplier operator defines a linear operator and this we have discussed in general. So, that is a densely defined uh, closed operator assuming that q is finite almost everywhere. Okay, so, that is no problem okay. and now we have to consider this operator. Okay. Consider the operator Laplace n plus m q. Okay. So, with appropriate conditions on uh, Q would like to consider this uh, <coughs> operator again H Q. So, that requires uh, certain conditions on Q. Okay. So, it is just if you look at the multiplier thing. So, if you take U in H 2, Q U 2 may not be in L 2. Okay. So, that requires some conditions on it. 
okay, and you want to apply after studying that. So, essentially you want to apply perturbation result again due to Kato perturbation result. Okay, so, let me just recall this is just in a general Hilbert space. Okay, so, let uh, H be a Hilbert space and uh, <coughs> A be a self agent operator in H. So, if B is a linear operator, B is a okay, let me write sim symmetric, symmetric linear operator in H such that uh, D A is contained in D P. So, that the operator A plus B is <coughs> defined on uh, domain D A such that D A is and B is A bounded with A bound less than So, what does that mean? So, this B x, so this is norm in H. Uh, so, okay, let me call it okay. plus B norm A x, A and B are <coughs> positive and B is less than 1. So, this is true for all x in So, you want to apply this Cato's theorem to the <coughs> operator Laplacian plus m q. So, already we have seen that Laplacian is a self adjoint operator with domain H 2. So, you want to uh, put conditions on q, so that the domain of m q contains H 2 okay, that is the first condition. And since Q is real, it is already automatically symmetric. The main thing is this estimate. Okay. So, this very crucial estimate and that we have to obtain for the multiplier operator M Q. Okay. So, that is the <coughs> uh, program, that is the program and okay. so the main estimate is this one. So, let me call it as proposition. So, again remember n equal to 3. Okay. So, this arguments <coughs> it is essential that n equal to 3. Okay. So, H 2 is contained in in fact. So, this is <coughs> C and bounded. Okay. Uh, this is of course, Sobolo lemma because we are in uh, n equal to 3, but we want a similar estimate. Okay, this in order to derive this uh, Cato estimate, we need <coughs> this one further. So, u of x. is less than or equal to C 1 uh, norm u ok C 1 ok let me C 1 epsilon to the minus 3 by 2 I will how it comes I will just 
phi 2 epsilon to the half okay, so for all x in r 3. So, this boundedness thing we want to quantify it. So, this is true for all epsilon positive and this norm is normal. So, this is the crucial estimate we need. Okay. So, proof so just <coughs> okay. So, you again since you are working in the whole space uh, just, uh, this u cap. So, it is let okay. uh, this is further for u in h 2. Okay, so, that is for u in h 2 we have this <coughs> estimate. So, let u be in h 2. Okay. So, using the Fourier transform definition, so we see that 1 plus mod chi square uh, u cap is in L2. Okay. And that implies, okay, so this, so we write this u cap j as, okay, let me write that. Uh, 1 plus mod j square sorry, minus 1 plus mod j square to the u cap. This you have seen it many times of course, so just writing that. Okay. So, this is in L 2 by the definition of H 2 and this is in L 2 because n equal to 3. Okay. So, here we are using that. So, this is in L 1. Okay. So, <coughs> if I take the inverse Fourier, Fourier transform automatically I get u is bounded. So, that is uh, fine, but we want this estimate. Okay. So, now that is what we want to do now. Okay. So, taking inverse Fourier transform we get right. So, u of x is less than or equal to some constant let me write that uh, integral uh, u cap j t j because we have concluded <coughs> that u cap is in L 1. Okay. Now, I write this one as c. So, 1 plus epsilon 4 mod j to the 4 minus 1 uh, or minus half minus half 1 plus. So, you pick any epsilon positive and just multiply and divide by this factor. Why these factors? So, again <coughs> let me recall a similar thing. So, if I Cauchy Schwarz, if A and B are positive, always write this is simplest thing, right? But suppose I want an epsilon factor to come here. Okay, so what I do, I do this trick. So this b by root epsilon, which is same as a b. Okay, and now if I apply that cos is far, so I get that epsilon. Okay, of course you get something here, but my main concern is to get an epsilon there. Okay, so, this is a similar manipulation. Okay, so, that is so any epsilon you take okay, 
uh, and insert these factors. So, that is just one and now you use cos is 1. So, this is less than or equal to. So, let me write that constant. So, 1 plus epsilon 4 mod j to the 4 minus 1. Okay, so, there is factor half let me write that and then similarly this one j for 4 u cap j square. and power half ok. And now, this can be easily computed again n equal to 3 comes into play here and this is just some constant into epsilon to the because of minus 1. So, you get minus 3 ok. So, this one so let me write that. So, another constant ok just tilde may be. So, this is epsilon to the minus 3 half and now look at here ok. So, 1 into u cap j square and again by partial relation that you get u square L 2 norm of u square. Epsilon 4 is a constant. So, we do not get anything there. So, just I, but again this mod j to the 4 u cap j square that is precisely the L 2 norm of the Laplace L square to the half ok. And finally, you just see that this is just <coughs> C 1 same thing C ok epsilon to the minus 3 by 2 norm u plus this <coughs> you get epsilon square here. So, that is why you get epsilon to the half. So, this is the crucial estimate ok. <coughs> so, it also shows that so, this Sobolo, those uh, Sobolo lemma says some uh, continuity of some space into some space, but one can do little more analysis and obtain estimates in a required form ok. So, this is one of them ok. So, that is the required here and okay. now you assume <coughs> ok this I assume that q is real value we are uh, assumed already q equal to q 1 plus q 2 where q 1 is bounded L infinity and q 2 is in L infinity ok. You check that uh, the Coulomb potential 1 by x satisfy this condition ok. So, that is an exercise satisfy this condition. So, that the potential can be written as sum of <coughs> an L infinity function and an L 2 function. ok satisfy this condition and you may also look into not just this one you can also look into other such exercises. So, for which value of beta positive ok. So, you can write <coughs> this potential as sum of an L infinity function and uh, an L 2 function. Okay. So, now we show that ok. So, that is uh, uh, this. <coughs> so, when so this m q now becomes m q 1 plus m q 2 ok. So, when q 1 is bounded, so just look at this m q q 1 
u in L2. So, this is just nothing but q1 u <coughs> uh, square to the half and that is just q1 L infinity norm of u. So, for all u in L2. So, in particular for <coughs> uh, u in H2, okay. so there is no problem uh, for the bounded part okay. and for the other part. So, this m q 2 again L2 norm. So, this let me write that. So, q 2 u square to the half and here I want to use the <coughs> L infinity norm for u and L2 norm for q. So, this is u L infinity uh, <coughs> into q2 this is L2 norm and now we have just shown that this is constant times epsilon to the minus 3 by 2 norm u plus epsilon to the half Laplace n u this is as it is if u is in H 2. Okay. And conclusion is that so that implies H 2 is contained in the domain of m q Okay, and we have the above estimates. Okay, so, let us combine them, we have the above estimates. So, by combining, so here you see you get L2 norm here and there is an L2 norm here. So, we can combine that and there is L2 norm of <coughs> Laplace. So, combi <coughs> combining what we get is that <coughs> combining the above estimates we get uh, what we get. So, this normal m q u L 2 norm <coughs> is less than or equal to some constant. So, now this constant depends on even the L 2 norm of q 1 uh, and L infinity norm of uh, <coughs> uh, okay, this norm of u okay, there is an epsilon also. So, let me put that but here I want to put it specifically ok. So, first of all <coughs> so this proves ok this for all u in H2 ok. So, this proves that m q is uh, Laplacian bounded okay, and the Laplacian bound is C 2 and this can be made less than 1 by choosing epsilon small okay. and <coughs> so that proves that again from the perturbation result from the, 
this proves Laplace n plus m q is self -edge. Okay, so that implies further. So <coughs> by Stone's theorem, so this i Laplace n m q generates a unitary. Okay, and that gives the solution for the Schrodinger equation. Okay, let me just write that and then continue in the okay. So, this in turn uh, gives a solution for the Schrodinger equation with a potential. Okay, of course, with uh, <coughs> some simple assumptions like that potential can be written as sum of an L2 function and an L infinity function. But of course, it is uh, uh, no way gives a way to write down the solution like we did for the Schrodinger equation without potential. Uh, okay, let me just this uh, we do not have here, but what I understand even for the and that is what uh, uh, Richard Feynman tried to write a famous formula, uh, but you should check, you should check that even for the potential. So, this <coughs> solution what we call Feynman. Cars formula. Okay, so I am not sure, but you should check that. Okay. Okay, I'll stop here, and uh, we'll continue in the next class. Some discussion. Further discussion.